Hello my soccer universe, with so many crazy things happening in Austria and in Germany, especially German Germany, I decided to actually split the two for once and make separate videos for Austria and Germany. Uh, well, the most remarkable result for me personally is that LASK has secured third place, which means they have secured a European group stage. However, Upward, there's also not much movement thanks to a draw at Rapid Vienna. And we have also the top decided Salzburg are champions because the only result that could not have happened in order to keep the title race kind of alive is, is what happened, although Sturm gave it their best. Had actually a good shot of getting probably a win in Salzburg, but it was not meant to be. And so the only thing that's really um, interesting in the upper playoff is, you know, which Vienna team will make it into the Conference League playoffs, which, uh, or will Klagenfurt pick one of those, will Rapid Vienna finish in sixth place, which would be the ultimate disaster for them. So that's the most uh, important up. We had also a uh, result in the relegation battle that was uh, kind of seismic because uh, Reed, the local rival of Lusk, uh, who always plays well against Lusk, but not so against the other other teams, lost a big one at home. And so they are now in serious trouble because in the last two rounds, they more or less need to get uh, two wins and, and need help, desperate help, and it ain't gonna happen. So uh, that's going down. And now here comes now my personal uh, part in it when I, I have in my office, I have a... Uh, a colleague who is of course from Reed and he's a big Reed fan and so yeah he's gonna get relegated but more importantly I have another colleague who is a fan of the local rival and I wanna actually start this video we talk about the second league in Austria which I usually do not do I don't follow it very very much but it has there have been some really 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 crazy results uh, it's a three-way battle ahead of the season Lusk's local rival although you know there's a whole video we could make about it is it really a rival or not or is it a fake rival whatever blue white lints blue white lints uh were the favorites ahead of the season to get promoted and uh after a rough start it actually they looked actually quite on a good way but it turns out that there's a three-way battle up top two weeks ago the table read that it was St. Perton at 53 points it was the Blauweiss Linz uh, behind them in 52 points, so a head to head. And Grazer AK or GAK, or I call them now Graz for this video because the German doesn't. Uh, GAK is how we call it in uh, Germany, so GAK, but I will call them Graz now. Were uh, behind on 50 points. However, there was a one big one is the Blauweiss actually went to Graz and beat them really well 3 nil already in the first half uh, the game was settled so it seemed to be that while they were still in contention kind of that it's between uh, Blauweiss and St. Pölten and the big clash was on the past weekend where Blauweiss Linz again played really well and gave them uh, and, and got a 2 nil win with a, a rather remarkable uh, second goal by Roni Valdo. Yes, Ronaldinho and Rivaldo in uh, Ronaldo and Rivaldo in one. Roni Valdo scoring from midfield to seal uh, that win that gave Blauweiss Linz a lead in the table, two points ahead of St. Pölten. But also Graz got a win at 53. They were now level with St. Pölten. And with uh, just, I think it was three rounds to go. Or uh, four rounds. And with three rounds to go, Blau Weiss were very much on course, having a rather manageable schedule with only one, you know, when you look, look at the table, yes, there was the uh, uh, team in there. The next one was probably the, tough, the toughest ones against Juan which you may have heard this was the team that the family of uh, Keske Honda actually bought and was uh, supported at one point. But uh, at home, blah, blah, and so on, it shouldn't be a problem. Well, that game happened on Friday. And uh, everyone in Linz was kind of already talking, well, we lose maybe the up, we might lose the upper Austria derby against Reed, but we may get again a Linz derby. In addition, Blau Weiss are also building a new stadium, much, much on a smaller scale than Lusk, like 5,000 or whatever. However, uh, it is nearing completion. They're selling uh, 
uh, season tickets for Bundesliga prices, of course, uh, already because it looked rather, rather good and they were very confident that they're gonna make it. And boy, was that game a weird one. Juan had a single shot on goal, which of course went into, in, into the goal. Blau Weiss were completely dominating in the game. We were even helped that a red card right after the half for Juan gave them the ad advantage. It was an onslaught and in the 87th minute, Ismail J. Bioglu <laughs> scored with the only shot on goal. Then there is a second red card, a uh, yellow red, uh, for a penalty call that Brandner then ends up missing. So Blau Weiss blew after having beat their um, their biggest opponents away from home rather convincingly blew the big chance already and now the question is who is gonna swoop in Graz duly won their game uh, and are now two points ahead of Blauweiss Linz but interestingly enough St. Burton did not win their game and are uh, still behind Blau, Blauweiss Linz so it's now Graz who have the very much the biggest uh, chance of getting promoted so Graz beat the uh, amateur team of Rapid Vienna 2-0 who are really at the bottom of the table but St. Burton ended up losing in Kapfenberg it is an absolute crazy one and you know Lask fans jokingly said well Blauweiss decided that they don't want to play a derby against Lask they rather play a derby against Ried and what it means for me in my office I'm the only one with Bundesliga status because the other two probably not know how to make it I will not go to the office relatively soon because I, I would be too gloaty and I don't want to gloat over my more or less boss but yeah crazy 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 stuff I already said Reed is gonna get relegated and now we go to the Bundesliga um, there was a Friday evening game a game where maybe Reed dominated overall the possession and the course of, of the game however when there were chances they always fell to Alta who had a very good counter-attacking uh, tactic um, and in the end it's decided by an own goal I think with a ball came it off the crossbar and then hitting Unga and into the net where potentially an Alltag player was uh, just ahead of the goalie and he may have been offside however if you look at the game situation I'm not sure if this was really such an offside so uh, you know things going back and forth overall gotta, gotta, gotta be say Alta probably deserved that win thanks to them playing it smartly and Reed are just not good enough and again if they would decide to play full on, not only against Lusk, but against other teams as well. I think they should not be in trouble. However, uh, their lead leadership who has been outstanding over the past two decades, honestly, at the moment is seriously lacking and they're not a very well run club at the moment. And after three years, they're going down again. So yeah. Uh, the other games is that now um, Wolfsburg with a big win in at Hartberg and uh, Tirol first securing a big win at Lustenau, securing also their survival in the league. So it's only between Ried and Alter and Wolfsburg now taking the lead uh, in the lower playoff meaning. They have a home game against the second place team, most likely Austria Lustenau, but you know, it's not quite decided yet. Yesterday, uh, Austria Klagenfurt against Austria Vienna. I mean, basically, there was not much at stake here in terms of, you know, European spots. However, um, if either team wanted to go further and maybe uh, put Rapid under more pressure, a win would have been needed. I personally was hoping for a draw because a draw point would mean that Lask automatically qualify. However, Jukic uh, gave Austria Vienna a lead that was duly equalized in the 92nd through Yaritz and at that point uh, Lask already had secured the draw so uh, didn't really matter but it was really an in in interesting situation because when Jukic gave the, them, them the lead uh, uh, Lask was still down we'll talk about that game in a sec so it needed something from Lask and then you got the relief and you, uh, you had the goal was two goals saved why was it nervous because next week we're playing Austria Vienna and it wouldn't all have been fun to play if there's still something to play for uh, in that sense. Uh, Lask's game against Rapid Vienna started horribly with Burgstaller scoring already in the second minute a really badly defended corner. Uh, Lask then found into the game, dominant especially the first half, scored a goal through Flecker, but there was an offside. Uh, a shot was taken from the re rebound. Uh, it got, got in. What annoyed me is that uh, Rapid were playing with their uh, reserve goalkeeper and he was clearly not up for par. 
they challenged him too little. Um, and what's even worse is that while you played, rel you finished the second half relatively well, just didn't s you didn't score or you didn't create many good chances uh, in the second half. I don't know why. It was still mostly controlled by Lusk, but the chances that Rapid had were crazy. I mean, they invited literally Rapid to score goals. I mean, one of them probably would have been called off for all of them, but there were two ch chances where uh, Laval had to step up big, or there was once a really great tackle by Talovierov. Uh, that was Maldini-like. He was behind um, the player, made the tackle, got the ball, got up and started another uh, action. He's tall, so it was probably, probably easy for him. But, you know, things like that did not look all that convincing, to be honest. Uh, and then it got, got even worse. They, uh, they gave away a stupid penalty because a handball uh, fell on uh, Stojkovic. Burgstaller, who had scored already the first goal, and he's the only real threat. I mean, he's over 20 goals now. Steps up for the penalty and skies it. If that is converted, I would not have said that this is an undeserved win for Rapid Vienna because Lask again, uh, while not playing badly, again had a hard time showing up in Hütteldorf. But then Coach Kuper, who is a Rapid le legend, uh, really uh, reacted. He brought on within five minutes four new players with Potsman, Ljubicic, Jovicic and, Go and Goeginger. And suddenly uh, there was more urgency and actually... Um, quite some uh, pressure on Rapid if Uza, who also came on during the second half, would be a little bit more controlled with his ball. He's so fast, but uh, his ball control is sometimes really, really la lacking. He tends to sky, sky shots. Uh, you know, there was also a good save in there. He could have made surely made a, a, a goal. Um, but just when I thought, yeah, they're going to lose it and Austria Venice is going to inch closer. We need the point in the next next game, blah, blah, blah. Goeginger uh, and Schul really combine very, very, very well. That seemingly the, uh, the situation is clear, but Goeginger just runs back and puts it into net. 1-1, one, one. and then I really thought they could win it again, but you know, I think it would have been a little bit too much, although it would have been a famous win. And then, and that third place is guaranteed, which I'm very, very happy. Uh, so European group phase coming next season, and let's see who they will play and uh, to what games I will be going. And then this was the big one, the tit potential title decider between Salzburg and Sturm. Three points between the two of them with Salzburg holding the advantage not only in goal difference, which is secondary uh, tiebreaker, but also due to the rounding down, if they have uh, level, level points, they have uh, the tiebreaker for that. So, but in, uh, for that reason, it meant if Salzburg wins with six points ahead of Sturm, they're already charged champions. If they lose, we have a title race on, although it might still uh, go into Salzburg's favor. Sturm actually played really, really, really well. And their coach uh, admitted afterwards that he was all set on being champ champion. He said every, every morning, I was woken up by, uh, we are the champions. My password was champion23. I changed it after the cup into double23, everything. They were all set of winning the championship. And they really played Salzburg very well away from home. There were also some mistones before that because Salzburg decided for the uh, roughly 30 or 35,000 um, arena to only sell tickets for the lower part, which is then if you take the main stand in, in addition. So it gives you about 17,000. So a little bit more than half full, which for Austria is still big. However, that game could have sold many, many more tickets for sure. However, it was only sold to season tickets or, you know, some other, uh, there were some nefarious things going on because Salzburg did not want that Sturm Graz fans come like crazy to Salzburg and sell out the arena. They didn't want to have another Barcelona in uh, the Europa League. And doesn't sound good. This is, a, this is a match that probably could have been sold out if you allow the upper, um, uh, upper stands to be opened or being to near sell out capacity, which does not happen. And the other thing is that many fans in Salzburg are not that happy. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not that moved by the championships anymore because it is not a tenth in a row. But as I say, Sturm played very well. They hit the post through Omega, who lobbed the goalkeeper really nicely and it just goes fast. But they get in the lead through Goran Stankovic just before the half after Sakaria corner. 
Dedic equalizes right after the half, but then it was a very open game where I had the feeling this might could go really either way and Sturm had their chances to win that one, but in the end it's a brilliant uh, individual performance by Konate who just had come, come on for, uh, six minutes earlier that decides the game 2-1 uh, for Salzburg and Salzburg secure the championship. And that's what we see also in the final standings. You know, it's all more or less decided. We have that Salzburg is not only the Champions League, also in the Champions League. Sturmgras have to play the Champions League playoffs, which means they have not guaranteed the European groups that they need to win one round as far as I know. Or maybe they have. Uh, I, have, I, have I have to see. Lask is for sure in, in third spot. But... The next three. That's really, 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 really tight and there's still stuff to play for. On the bottom, it's now looking really bad for Reed, whereas Lustenau and Wolfsburg are, uh, Wolfsburg are still going for uh, the second playoff spot. Uh, and that's more or less also what we see in the standings right here. I give you the next two rounds. Uh, I'm... We will go to Lask, I guess, also Austria Vienna this time. I will not compromise on that. We have a pretty big one, Rapid against Sturm Graz, but it's, you know, it means more to Rapid than anyone else. And Salzburg will probably get their celebration uh, with the trophy. And Hartberg can already downread with a win. And there's a Fallberg Derby that also has quite some stuff to play for. And you see also the last run. So yeah, that was it. A little bit longer from Austria, but I thought it's worth it to talk about that. And then I'll get a little bit later, give you all my thoughts on what happened in the German Bundesliga, because there was more madness. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.